Hello and welcome. This is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. So today we are going to do sublimation, sublimation markers, and infusible ink on sequin pillow covers. So I'm super, super excited about this project. I've been wanting to try sublimation or infusible ink on sequins for a while. So we're just gonna try it. I have three of these pillow covers here. One for a sublimation print off my sublimation printer, one for an infusible ink that I've cut on my Cricut machine, and then I took these Artist Brie sublimation markers and I drew with my Cricut machine. I'm gonna color that in kind of manually, get a design and put that on one. So these pillow covers are from Artist Brie and it is the April block of the month. That means that they're a limited run and as soon as they're gone, they're gone only available in April. So if you watch this and you want to give these sublimation sequined pillow covers a try, you might want to go ahead and pick them up before they run out because when they're gone, they're gone. I will drop links for everything I use in the description below, including the blank. And then you can pick up the blank and give this project a try for yourself. So let's take a look at the supplies we're going to use and then and let's make three pillow covers. I will note that I am gonna use my heat press for the pressing portion because it does require heavy pressure and I'm not sure if I could get that from my easy press. You are welcome to give that a try and just press down really hard with that easy press, see what happens, but I am gonna use my heat press just so I don't ruin any of my pillow covers because I can't wait to see how they're gonna turn out. So let's turn the camera around and take a look at the supplies we're gonna need and then start making some sequin pillow covers. All right, so here's that gorgeous sequin pillow cover out of the packaging. This is how it comes. You'll need some protective paper, some heat tape, artist spray markers, and I've already used my Cricut and drew this with the black artist spray marker, and I will link to a video below with how I put these markers in my machine so they'll fit in the Cricut Joy and the Cricut Maker and the Cricut Explore series. I have a hack to fit these markers in, so I'll link to that below. And then I have a sublimation print, printed off my sublimation printer for another pillow cover. And then I took the infusible ink sheets and I cut them on my Cricut machine. And I cut this large design so we can see how that one works. You'll also need a lint roller. So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our pillow cover before we even start pressing. What I'm gonna do is just remove this tag first of all. And then what we need to do is get all these sequins to the white side. So if you can see over here, you might be able to see they're gold on one side. The sublimation side is the white side of the sequins. This row isn't gonna matter because we're not gonna sublimate all the way to the edge, but all they should mostly be on white, but you may see one every once in a while that's on gold and you'll just wanna Work your way around the pillow cover, flip all those to white so that all of those sublimate correctly. And I'm, again, I'm not gonna worry about the ones along the edges because my designs go in the center or off slightly to one side. These are called like mermaid pillow covers sometimes, but you will put your design on one side. You can flip it to all sequins or all designs depending on which way you flip it. So everything looks like it's on the white side. And now we'll just take our lint roller and we wanna rub it along with the sequins. So I don't wanna flip any of the sequins with my lint roller. So I'm just gonna roll it with the sequins and watch as you go along and make sure none of them flip back. And this just cleans any debris that may be on the pillow cover itself. So once you have that clean, we're ready to press. Okay, so I have my paper that my Cricut drew my design and now I'm just gonna take a variety of the artist free markers. So I do have another piece of copy paper and this is just regular copy paper. I have another piece just in case any bleeds through underneath. 
And then I can just kind of add some colorful accents. You can color this as much or as little as you would like. But at this stage, it's basically like a coloring book. So I'm just going to color in some of my design. Then once I'm finished coloring, we'll talk about adding this design with tape to the pillow cover because there are some tips and tricks to learn there. All right, now I'm done coloring in my design and we can add it to our pillow cover. So I'm gonna tape all of these that I have to my pillow cover first and then press them all at once. Um, so what you don't wanna do is add this heat tape directly to these sequins because it can pull them off. So what I'm gonna do, I have two sheets of protective paper. And what I'm gonna do is make sure they cover the entire pillow cover and hang off all four edges. I'm gonna run one piece of tape just on this edge to hold those two pieces together. So it's kind of like one piece at this point. And then I'm going to locate my design where I want it on the pillow cover. So I kind of want it to one side and slightly down. And then I'm gonna add a couple pieces of tape to this, but sticky side up. So I'm not sticking it to my sequins, I'm just sticking it to this paper. And the sticky side is facing me at this point, it's up. So I'm gonna do one on that side. Do one on this side. Again, sticky side up. Now, I'm gonna lay this paper back over the top. And I'm gonna press down on those two pieces of tape. So now, my paper is taped to this protective paper. So now I can flip this over, and we can tape this down just a couple more spots. All right, so I'll just add maybe two more pieces of tape to this. All right, so now this is stuck to this protective paper. I'm gonna flip that over one more time. Make sure this time it needs to be like in its final location. And now we're gonna use some tape and we're gonna go on the back of the pillow cover and extend to this protective paper. And I'm gonna flip this over so you can see as soon as I get it fairly secure. All right, I have it fairly secure at this point, so I'm gonna flip it over so we can take a look from the back and add a couple more pieces of tape. So carefully lift and flip. And now you can kind of see what I did. So I went from the back of the pillow cover onto my paper without touching the sequins. So at this point, I just wanna make sure Everything's laying down. And I'm gonna add a few more pieces of tape. So now this one is ready for the press. So I'm gonna repeat the same procedure with both my sublimation print as well as my infusible ink sheet. I'm hopeful this infusible ink sheet will work, but it is sticky, so I'm not sure if it's gonna rip my sequins off or not but we're gonna try it with the third pillow cover. So let's set this one to the side and repeat with the other two. All right, here's the next pillow cover. So I did wanna point out that these are different colors. So this one has silver on the other side. I flipped them all to white and I went ahead and cleaned it with my lint roller. And now I'm going to actually put this tape on first. Sticky side. Up, I guess and <laughs> be up when I flip it over okay so then when I flip it over now this tape is up and then I can locate this design so I want it to be basically in the center that looks pretty good 
And then we're gonna add two sheets protective paper and I'm gonna press it down so those pieces of tape I think I got a sequin on my tape. There we go. And now those pieces of tape are stuck to this protective paper and I'm just gonna add a couple small pieces of tape to hold that paper together. And then once again, like we did before, I'm gonna tape it to the bottom of the pillow cover and to this protective paper that I just added everywhere. That way, hopefully, no tape is on our sequins. Did wanna point out these do have a zipper, so you might wanna orient your design where that zipper's towards the bottom. I don't think I mentioned that on my last one. This design doesn't matter because it um, could go either way. So let's add the third with infusible ink and see how that works. All right, and this one is actually a third and final co color and the sequins are kind of black on the back. All right, so I've already cut and weeded this infusible ink. And what I wanna do first, the carrier sheet on this is really sticky. I'm gonna trim this super close to the circle so that I get as little of the sticky on the sequins as possible. So I'm just gonna trim that. I'm actually gonna move this. So now that I've trimmed that all the way around, we're gonna try sticking this to the pillow cover and see what happens. So my zipper is down and we're gonna see if this holds down well. And I don't think that's gonna hold down very well. Okay, so Maybe we can do the same thing, laying some paper over the top. All right, the problem with this is it's so curled, it's just not gonna stay down. So, the only option I think we have is to go ahead and tape it. I cut my tape super small. I'm gonna use as little as I possibly can. Try to get this to stay down. Maybe seven, eight pieces. I think that will hold it. We'll see if we can get that back off without removing any sequins. Maybe one more. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the paper. I'm gonna put it over the top. I'll just run a couple pieces of tape over it. And now let's break out the heat press. All right, my heat press has almost heated up and what I wanna do is check the pressure, make sure I have it, like I have a really light pressure, so I'm going to adjust that. You lighten it up a little bit. Okay, I think that will work. And we're almost heated up and then I have all of my sequin pillow covers ready to press. And we're going to start with the sublimation version. Now, the pillow cover itself, like you have that layer of sequins, then you have some fabric, and then you have the inside of the pillow cover, and then you'll have another layer of fabric on the back. The chances of that sublimation ink reaching all the way through those sequins 
all the way through the fabric into the back of your pillow cover and the bottom of your heat press is very, very slim. But we're gonna be cautious today. And I'm gonna use a sheet of just protective paper on the bottom. And I'm just gonna use one because I can only press the size of my plate at one time anyway. So I am just going to put one sheet down just to protect, just in case. The chances are slim, but better safe than sorry. And if no ink reaches this, I'll just reuse it for another project. So don't worry about wasting that piece of paper. Most likely no ink's gonna get on it and I'm just gonna reuse it for my next project. So this pillow cover presses at 400 degrees for 60 seconds and I have my heat press set to that time and temperature. We are at about 356, so we'll come back in a few minutes as soon as it's heated up, press our first cover. All right, the heat press is ready. I do have my heat resistant gloves here, just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. So I'm dealing with a large blank and my heat press is not that large. It's large enough to press at least these first two all at one time, but I'm gonna have to get my hands pretty close to this heat plate, so heat resistant gloves are always a good idea. So we're just gonna carefully add this and we want it to cover up, in this case, the sublimation paper. And I'm gonna try to keep everything in place because we worked carefully on that. And we just want the sublimation paper itself to be on the heat press completely. And it is. It is covered by our protective paper. And so now I'm going to close the handle. And it's gonna count down for 60 seconds. As soon as that 60 seconds is up, we'll come back, lift this up, and remove that one and press the next one. That beep means we're done. We're gonna lift this up. We're gonna carefully remove this sheet. And this is gonna be hot, so I'm going to move it over. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put this behind me. Out of the way. Still have my protective sheet on the bottom. There's no ink. I'm gonna leave that in there. Next, we're gonna press the one with the artist pre markers. Same time, same temperature. Um, we're just gonna kind of work this one into the press. Remember, we just need it over the area where we actually have our design on these two. And the infusible ink one, we're gonna have to press a few times to get that entire design inside there. All right, so I'm pressing down again. 460 seconds. So while that one's pressing, I don't like to wait. We're gonna go ahead and peel this sublimation version off. So you just wanna be careful and not grab any of those sequins. So I'm just kind of carefully removing this top paper. And then I'm gonna show you the gorgeous results. There we go. So we're gonna do a close up here in a minute of the action with the sequins. But I just wanted to demonstrate how to remove that and then carefully remove the tape so you don't grab any of those sequins. Now this tape is absolutely reusable if it's still sticky. So if you find that the tape as you peel these off is still sticky, you can absolutely reuse it. I just wanted to do all three of these once for a video, but you could definitely, there we go. You could definitely like do one, tape the other with the tape if it's still sticky. So I'm gonna take this one off. And we're gonna add our infusible ink version. So I did a large design on this one on purpose. We, I wanna see what happens on this one if I press it multiple times. This might require, we'll see how it looks in here two presses at least, possibly four. So let's go into the press with this one.
And I think two presses is gonna be good. Yeah, so I'm gonna do our first press and then we'll move it and we'll do a second press. So we'll go down for that first one and we don't like to wait and I had heat resistant gloves on so why not? Let's peel off this one with the artist free markers. It also looks amazing. So you can see that one, gorgeous. I'm gonna set this one down here to cool. And this is ready to move. So you can either rotate it or move it back just depending on what works best. I'm gonna try just moving it back and hanging it kind of off the press in the back and see if that works. We'll see. And I think that's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there. 60 more seconds and then we'll come back and take a look at this one. Cross our fingers that this one worked because it's a complete experiment. And our last press is done. Let's see what it looks like. I'm hopeful I can get this off here without damaging my sequins. Let's find out. So I'm gonna be very slow. All right, it's ready. So it is actually looks amazing, looks really gorgeous. We'll get a close up of all these. Um, so this one, I was just really careful. I didn't lose any sequins. There is a little bit of ghosting because I had to move it in the press, I think, and um, do it twice. So just a little ghosting on the side over here. I think with the design, it actually works. So I'm fine with it. But if you wanted to avoid that, I would definitely do something you could do in one press. So something smaller than your heat plate. So let me put some pillow covers in these after they cool. And then we'll take a look at that mermaid effect and wrap this up. All right, so let's take a closer look at each of these. So this is the one with the flowers, the artist pre-markers. It is purple on the back. And when you flip the sequins, they are a gold color. So you can see you can flip them all up and then push them back down to reveal your design back. Then this one is black on the back and the sequins flip to black as you flip them up. So you can have a black sequin pillow cover and then when you flip them back down, you reveal your gorgeous design. And then finally, we have the sublimation version. It is white on the back and these flip to silver. So this might very well be my favorite is the silver with the white on the back. And then you just flip them down and reveal your design. So this is definitely a fun and easy way to make some pillow covers that everyone will love. These make great gift ideas. And you saw three different ways to use these. So whether you have a sublimation printer, you want to use the artist free markers. Now I drew this outline with my Cricut, but you could just use the, arc, the markers and freehand a design and put it on a pillow cover. Just remember it does need to be mirrored. So if you do any text, you wanna be sure to mirror that. Or if you have a Cricut and wanna cut infusible ink, you can use these pillow covers with that as well. Remember what I said at the beginning of this, this is the April block of the month from Artist Brie. So you wanna be sure to pick these up if you wanna try 
this project and I'll leave links for everything I used, including the pillow covers in the description below. So drop down there, head to those links, but pick up some pillow covers and make some sequin pillow covers for your home. I know that you are gonna love them and you can just sit and play with your pillows all day. So thank y'all so much for joining me. If you liked this video, if you learned something new, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we've covered at all, please ask those in the comment section below. If you have a question about your Cricut machine in general or sublimation in general, you can drop down to the comment section and ask those as well. Or if you have questions about the artist free markers, feel free to ask those. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos like this every week, Cricut videos, sublimation videos, videos using sublimation markers that you are absolutely going to love. So I hope you will head on over there, hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.